right. Next up, please welcome Coronet, presenting our drawer lever, Carmel Domschlack, and Dor Doran Milk. I'm sorry, Milk Dyke. Hello, everyone. My name is Dror Lever, and I'm the Chief Security Officer at Coronet. I'm joined by two of my co-founders, Doron Milchteich and Professor Carmel Domschlag. Coronet detects and evades comjacking on cellular and Wi-Fi networks. Comjacking is the ability to uh, hijack the communication channel between any device and the Wi-Fi and cellular network that it's connected to, and in the process, to eavesdrop on conversations, manipulate Wow, manipulate data transmissions, and sorry about that. Wow, okay. It's all good. Technical difficulties. They're nice slides. Yeah, thank you. Okay, back. Um, comjacking is the uh, ability to intercept data transmissions between any device and Wi-Fi and serial networks it is connected to, intercept the transmissions, eavesdrop on conversations and manipulate the data or the device itself. To demonstrate comjacking, I've asked Carmel to go to the TechCrunch page. Thank you. Can we see it? And now I'd ask uh, Doron, can we switch to, yes, uh, Doron to comjack Carmel's brand new iPad, which is a valid business expense. Yep. Carmel, can you hit refresh, please? What you should have seen <laughs> is that we hijacked the communication channel and were able to insert our own content onto the page. Uh, live demos are really tough, especially in the security space. Maybe keep trying it. We'll come back to yes, that. Yes, let's okay. do that. Can we go back to the slides? That's right. So no, what uh, comjackers can do, in addition to inserting content, is the ability to uh, manipulate the device itself remotely. They can. Uh, they can insert uh, new data, they can change the profile, uh, and they can, um, they can install malware as well as do other very nasty things. Now, I know that this sounds like science fiction. As a matter of fact, until very recently, it was. Comjacking was in the domain of very well-funded government agencies. The equipment that is used to conduct comjacking cost around two and a half million dollars, and the agents operating it were highly trained expensive teams. What happened over the last 18 months is that the uh, software that enables comjacking went open source and software that enables comjacking went open source and the hardware costs dropped to $1,500 for cellular attackers and $29 for Wi-Fi. Suddenly we see comjacking in the hands of organized crime corporate spies, as well as hackers. You see, every device we use is made up of multiple layers. The computing layer, the applications and operating system we interact with every day, and the communication layers, which are always on and we take for granted. All of the current defenses are focused on the computing layer, on what's happening on the device itself which is why we see an increase in attacks over, over the last few years, because devices are defenseless. Devices are defenseless because it is impossible to see what is happening off the device in midair where the comjacker operates until now. We're very proud to announce on this stage the unveiling of Coronet, the only platform that detects and evades comjacking in real time. By installing a very lightweight agent on any device, you know what, I'm just gonna start doing this in manually. Um, by installing a very lightweight agent on any device, Windows, Mac, uh, iOS, or Android, without jailbreaking or rooting the device, we're actually able to detect the comjacker in midair and route data around him, essentially making the device completely resilient to eavesdropping, interception, or manipulation. So how do we do it? That's the breakthrough. Think of us as a sonar and the networks around us as the ocean. We're able 
to detect, we're able to construct from about 300 parameters that we store on the device, an image. We're able to construct that image of the network outside the device and detect the anomaly. In this case, the comjacker. You see, even though we don't see them, the networks around us are a physical thing. And the comjacker's presence in that environment leaves an imprint on that environment. We're able to detect that imprint and route the data around the comjacker. If you think this is far-fetched, consider this. In February of this year, 2.2 million BMWs that use the connected drive technology were discovered to be susceptible to comjacking. Yeah, last year, it was discovered that the Wi-Fi networks of 5,000 hotels in Asia, high-end hotels, were comjacked, exposing specifically Western executives' data. All of their emails, uh, documents, shared drives were completely exposed for a period of seven years until the attack was discovered. Because we target the enterprise market, we've built an enterprise-grade dashboard and platform that allows the CSO to manage deployment, manage employees, and see threats in real time. If this map looks familiar, it's actually a map of the threats in and around this building as of this morning. The uh, yellow signs are suspicious networks, and the red sign with an exclamation mark is actually an actual attack. That's us. That's OK. That's disconcerting. <laughs> so we, uh, we plan to go to market uh, through uh, partnering with carriers and MSSPs. The enterprises have already partnered with these organizations uh, to support them on endpoint protection. And uh, we are going to sell to market directly with them. Um, the uh, business model is very simple. It's a monthly fee per device, which we gladly share with our distribution channel. The endpoint protection market is huge. We're looking at 1.1 billion corporate devices by 2018. But for us, that's just the beginning. We plan to bring Coronet to the IoT market, where we see 2.7 billion devices by 2018. 2.7 billion unprotected wireless backdoors into home and enterprise networks. Thank you very much. All right. Great job. Everyone's got hiccups sometimes. It happens. All right. Judges. Yeah, I have a couple questions. So um, one, Carmel? as the attack vectors change, how yes. are you going to update you know, the detection technology that you use? And the second is related to it, um, which is, um, <clears throat> If you so attack vectors changing, and also how do you manage you know over notification or false positives? Because a lot of these detection cybersecurity detection have that issue. So I'll ask uh, Dr. Carmel Domstock to respond to that. Okay, so to the first question first, um, uh, <clears throat> there's obviously no one single bullet to stay ahead of uh, of the attackers. What we do on our side are two things. One, the critical two things. One. Um, the part of our technology is looking for anomalies in the landscape, timely landscape of the wireless communication, whether these abnorm uh, anomalies are caused by new vectors of attacks or previously known. The question is how you test that, and the test, the evaluation of this uh, model is done by the unique attack labs that we created in our company that continuously generates mutations and variants of various vectors of attack. Regarding uh, false positives and minimizing them to a reasonable amount, uh, first we alarm once we, once the system reaches a certain high confidence in that the problem is around. And we are, for two months from now, we're in the test with one of the world's largest carriers, a very pedantic test, and um, it's hard to testify for, you know, for, for ourselves, but we pass these tests of flying colors, both for Wi-Fi and for cellular. And, of course, we have the best team on Earth that is watching <laughs> us now in Israel in the middle of the night together, so that's the best recipe to ta target false positives. So for the anomaly detection, does the system learn across the network? So do you keep sending data back to a central hub where you run machine learning at scale to learn about new threats? Yes. Okay. And to get this going, how do you think of the cold start problem of not having enough data to train the algorithm and be efficient as of day one? So as I said, it's only part of the technology that is looking for these anomalies because of the issue of 
evolving new vectors of attacks. As well, the same lab that we use to check the anomalies is used to model the known vectors of attacks that, are, that come with the system, even at cold start. So if the user gets to an area that was never observed by none of the users of Coronet, uh, still the system is active and the system is ready to catch those attackers. Of course, reaching that level of confidence sufficient to alarm the user will be harder. So in terms of this uh, acquisition pathway through the carriers, do you intend that to be carriers through the enterprises or do you try and go on a consumer level as well? So um, our target audience is the enterprise and we go to that market with the carriers. Um, most of the carriers find that easier to sell into the enterprise a security solution because they've already done that. Uh, if a carrier that uh, partners with us decides to go consumer, we're all uh, we're very happy to support that as well. We do not intend to sell direct to the consumers. Do you anticipate any uh, bring your own device vulnerabilities in this system? So actually the entire platform is designed around the fact that now, especially in enterprise, it's all about bring your own device, especially in the US, uh, not only for mobile phones, but also even for laptops. People are now bringing their own laptops to work, which is a huge vulnerability hole. And that's why our offering, which is pure software, completely unintrusive, is uh, very attractive both to the employee as well as to the employer. Is there a trade-off? This runs locally, right? Is there a trade-off in terms of, I don't know, battery consumption or uh, any of those? I'll take that. Right. So uh, right now our tests, uh, and not just our tests, but the carriers who are uh, testing us right now are looking at an impact on the battery of about 1% per day, which, which I think is very acceptable for the kind of protection we offer. And then if something's detected, what do you expect the user to do? Or does the software actually shut down the connection? That's a great question. So there is, there is now yeah, there, we, we skipped the part of the demo of the actual detection because mm. we ran out of time. But to answer your question, so we have two different modes. Uh, there is the executive mode, which means we actually alert the user that there is a comjacking happening in, uh, at that moment. And we give them an option of what to do next, which network to choose. We grade the networks by level of, uh, of safety, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but most users will never see that. Most users, Coronet will basically identify the comjacker and route data and voice around uh, the comjacker automatically. All right, we're out of time. That was Coronet. Good job. Thank you very much. And again, great job pushing through the, uh, the quirks.